Oh, how are you all doing? Let's go ahead and knock out your main monthly reading for April 2024. April 2024 for Scorpio. So for those of you who would like to find out how to schedule a personal reading, please check down there in the description box of this video. That is where you will find everything you need to know. All right, I kind of want to just hop right into this as soon as I find a deck that'll talk to me. Yeah, there we go. This one's my baby. I've had this one since 2021, man. All right. Okay, cool. All right, so I'm starting these off with the next person that's coming in. Next person due to come in. Now, this is not necessarily the person that you're interested in. Not necessarily the person that you're thinking about. It could be for some of you. If it is, you're a lucky one. This is the next person coming in, whether you like it or not. Next person coming in, whether you know them or not. Whether you're interested in them or not. Let's see how that situation's looking. How's it looking? Universe. Next person coming into Scorpio's life. Mm, four of Swords reversed. That's a weird energy to jump out for a new connection. Okay. Oh, and the Two of Swords. So, indecisiveness, indecision, leading to restlessness and nervousness. Hmm. So, you, you're up in your head overthinking things, wondering whether or not you're seeing red flags. Okay, that's what it is. Now, to, to make things very clear, when I pull my first spread of the reading, this isn't necessarily the rock-solid, end-all, be-all truth of the matter. This is a general overview, mainly, mainly from your perspective, mainly, okay? My, by the way, by the way, my readings are not designed for cross-watchers. They're not. My readings are designed to give guidance and assistance to the sign that I'm reading for, and that's it, okay? So, all right, now, it appears as if there may be some red flags. There are some things about this person that you are hyper fixating on, and you're driving yourself a little bit crazy, not 100% sure if these are red flags or not or if they're red flags that you should worry about, or if they are red flags that you should bring up and talk about, you know? Uh, and the reason I think it's bothering you is because you're catching feelings for this person really quickly. Really quick. But you're doing the best that you can to try to keep your head above water. You're trying to swim to the surface and keep your head above water, so that you can get some air and think straight. But you're having a hard time doing that because you're sinking emotionally. You're falling for this person, like hardcore. So it's freaking you out a little bit. Looks like a little bit of codependency energy is showing itself in here too. But yeah, you're still, no matter how hard you're falling for this person, no matter how empty, lonely, and emotionally codependent you may be feeling, you're still trying to keep your head above water. And, and I like that about you. That's why, Scorpio, you all are my favorite water sign. That's why. Because I like that about you. Okay. Hmm. Well, that's the only way I can slice that. Let's take a look at this person's intentions then. Let's see what's really going on with them. Let's see what is the real dealio, Emilio. All right, let's see. What's this person's real feelings and intentions? What do they really want with you? King of Pentacles. Okay. 
Now, I could see why you may be a little bit concerned about this person's intentions. But I wouldn't read this as bad intentions. Maybe some of you, this person could possibly be a, a business owner, maybe. Maybe an entrepreneur, CEO, for whatever, for whatever reason, I think they, they put their work, their finance, and their empire above all other things. And they won't let anything come in the way of their work, business, career, and finance. Boom, see? Ten of Pentacles. Like I said, could be an earth sign for some of you, or this person's just very superficial and materialistic. Man, dude. Okay. All right. So I see what this person's problem is. I see it. Okay. I see what their problem is. So this person was burned very badly in the past. Very badly. Okay. Now, what do most people do who get burned in the past? What do they do? Nothing. They don't do anything. They just bottle it up, bury it, stuff it away, and put on a hard shell exterior that kind of honestly is designed to keep people out away from this thing here, right? Because it's got swords stuck in it, so you ain't coming near it because it hurts, right? But... So, so, yeah, they're still holding on to a lot of anger, a lot of bitterness. This person is very, very big on peace. This person wants all peace and no drama. And I don't think this person is afraid of being alone. However, however, this person's fallen for you too. But they are not letting their emotions make any what they would consider to be stupid decisions. So that's why they're kind of wearing this false cloak of cool, cold, detached confidence. And they, they seem to be coming off a little bit cold, but they're not. They're not. They got feelings for you too. I don't think this person has bad intentions. I don't. I just think they spent a lot of time uh, de developing defense mechanisms against this. Mm. Fear of abandonment. Okay. Looks good to me, man. Let's see the signs I have on the table. I have Scorpio, Cancer, Leo, Aries, Sagittarius. Okay, let's see how this plays out for the first 30 days. How's it playing out for the first 30 days? How's it playing out for the first 30 days? Mm -hmm. mm, man, I don't know. This person isn't coming forward with their heart on their sleeve. They're just not. They may not open up in the first 30 days. Five of Swords. Hmm. Uh oh, Devil card. Ah, that's what I thought. I knew that was coming. I knew that was coming. So, the tension as as you continue falling for this person and developing feelings, the tension starts building, and the tension starts building, and then the energy starts becoming toxic. And it builds and builds and builds and builds and builds and builds and builds until POW! It pops off into an ugly conflict between the two of you. 
and that'll put a permanent dent in the connection and forever alter the trajectory of y'all's path moving forward from that point. Let's get the advice on this. Let's get the advice on this. Let's see if we can, uh, let's see if we can avoid that. Let's, it's, it, look, I can't promise you nothing, but uh, I'll give it a shot. What's the advice on this? Not feeling this day, hang on. What's the advice on this? The hangman. Okay. So take the time to look at things from as many different perspectives as you possibly can. Okay. Um, Try to do the best you can, and I know this is easy to say and hard to do, but I still got to say it. Try to do the best that you can to manage your expectations. I got to get some sage in the air, man. You should feel the fucking energy in my studio right now. It is so goddamn thick you could cut it with a knife. Okay, try to manage your expectations. I know that's easy to say and hard to do, because that's just what we do as humans. You know, we cast forth a projection of the future. Um, ideally, we, we cast forth a projection of what we want the future to be. Or some people spend their time projecting an image of what they're afraid the future might be. Either or. But we want to kind of try not to do that. And that's hard. I know that's hard. But if you can practice doing that, then it becomes a little bit easier to stand in your own integrity with the energy of, I don't know if I can trust you. Maybe I can. Maybe I can't. But let's say I can't. Let's say I can't trust you. Who's the one missing out? You are. I know what I bring to the table, and I know my value. If you fuck this up, you're the dumbass. You're the idiot. You're the one missing out, not me. If you fuck this up, well, I just take that as the universe taking the trash out for me. So maybe I can trust you, maybe I can't. We'll see. But you know what? I can still open up and be vulnerable with you because I'm solid with myself and my own intentions. All right? See what I'm saying? I know it sounds easy and it's tricky. It actually, I know I make it sound easy. It took me years to master that. It took me years. It took me years. And I'm still working on it. But, but try to practice that when you're connecting with somebody new. When it all comes down to it. Look, this is for everybody. Not just Scorpio. Scorpio, cross watcher, uh, obsessive psycho stalker that likes to watch everything that I do. Whoever you are, whatever you're watching this video, listen up, okay? Listen carefully. The only person who needs to know what your intentions are is you. Because the universe responds to one thing and one thing only your frequency, your vibration, what's really going on inside your heart and mind. That's what the universe responds to. Not what people think your intentions are. Not what people think your vibration is. Not the judgments people cast on you. That's not what the universe responds to. Do you really think, honestly, that the universe is looking at you saying, well, all these people think you're an asshole. So, sorry, I'm going to have to thump you on the head because that's what everybody thinks. Do you think that's what the universe is saying? No. The universe is looking at you saying, hey, look, I know all these people think this. Fuck them. I don't care what they think. I know where your heart is. I know what your intentions are. I got you. Don't worry about what they think. 
Let them think in one hand and shit in the other and see which one fills up first. So being solid with yourself and your own intentions is mandatory in a situation like this. Mandatory, okay? All right, now let's, uh, let's see, who was that? The next person coming in. Okay, so now we're going to look at the person that you're actually interested in, okay? We're going to take a look at the person that you're actually interested in. Let's see what's happening in April. What is happening in April between Scorpio and the person you're actually interested in? We got a King of Pentacles again, man. What? What? What's going on here? What is going on here? Ah, oh, this deck's getting an attitude with me. Come on, deck. Wake up. You're one of my favorites. Okay. Two more shuffles. Two more. The Emperor reverse. Some of you are interested in Aries. You intimidate this person, dude. You intimidate this person, man. It's telling me that you're walking away from this. Um. Now, the devil card. Now, again, the first spread is just a general overview, mainly from your perspective. I don't know if you have been sexually intimate with this person or not, but you're coming to the conclusion with the Queen of Swords that this person may not be interested in taking this connection further than that. So it's telling me you're walking away from this. Yeah, it's kind of feeling to me like a new start in a relationship is going to be attempted, but you are drawing the conclusion that it's nothing but a sex-based connection, so you're walking away from this. Looks like it's something that's going to start quick and end quicker than it started. Okay. Could be a Capricorn for some of you. I also have Aries here. Hmm. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm not going to speak on that yet. Let's just see what comes through. Let's look at their energy. Let's see how they really feel. Let's see if that devil card come out again, yo. Let's see if it come out again. What's this person's true energy, feelings, and intentions towards Scorpio? What's their true feelings, energy, and intentions towards Scorpio? Ten of Pentacles, the person is very, very, very superficial, materialistic. Ten of Cups reversed. Mm. Okie dokie. See, there's nothing wrong with Ten Pentacles, okay? For those of you new to my channel and new to my style, I am not one of those fake, full of shit, spiritual public figures who are going to stand up in front of you and tell you that materialism is bad, that money is evil. The love of money is the root of all evil, right? Okay, well, I'm not going to stand here and tell you that money is evil. Money is not evil. Money is not the root of all evil. The love of money is the root of all evil. There's nothing wrong with having 10 pentacles. Nothing wrong with that at all, dude. Nothing wrong. As long as you got one cup next to each pentacle. That's the caveat to it. And this person does not. So, I don't know if this person really wants to settle down and have anything long term. It's kind of like this person's keeping you at an arm's distance with this attitude of, we'll see where this goes. We'll see where this goes. But here's the thing. Some of you are dealing with another fixed sign, okay? And two fixed signs coming together, that can be slippery because as a fixed sign, you do shit on your fucking terms, right? Right? I'm a fixed sign too. <laughs> I know how we are. 
I don't care what fixed sign you are, Scorpio, Taurus, Aquarius, or Leo. I don't care. I do shit my fucking way. I do shit at my pace. I do shit on my terms. You don't like it? Fuck off. I don't care. This is how I do it. I'm doing shit my way. We're doing shit on my terms, right? Well, if you're dealing with another fixed sign who has that same attitude, right? Butt heads a little bit, right? Doesn't have to be a fixed sign, but especially, especially. So I don't think this person is playing with you. I don't think so. I don't think they're playing games with you. I don't think they're just trying to get laid or whatever it is that you're thinking. I think that they are keeping you at an arm's distance. They're trying to do things on their terms, their way, and you're trying to do things on your terms, your way. And y'all's terms aren't compatible with each other, is what I think it is. King of fucking Pentacles. What is it with y'all and King of Pentacles? Could be a Taurus for some of you. I don't think this person has bad intentions. They're just very stubborn and stuck in their ways and they're doing things on their terms. So, okay. Well, we already saw the outcome, basically. So I'm not going to pull another spread on the outcome. Let's jump straight to the advice. Let's get the advice. What's the advice? What is the best advice? Page of Wands reversed. No drama. None. Do not allow any childish, foolish, nonsense, drama, or bullshit into the equation. Okay. Put your foot down. If somebody else is trying to bring that energy to the table, and you don't bring that energy to the table either. If it gets to a point where you start feeling like you're about to lash out like a little toddler, just back away. Back away. I'm not bringing that energy to this shit, man. I ain't got time for that. I ain't got time for that. All right? No drama on either side. If they try to bring that shit to the table, point them towards the door. Just take things slow, man. Take things slow. And do not try to control things that you have no control of. I.E., how somebody feels. You cannot demand that somebody feel a certain way. You cannot demand that somebody see things a certain way. You cannot demand. Oh, and another one. Oh man, this one drives me nuts. You cannot demand an apology. That digs up under my skin and gets under my gets on my fucking nerves so bad. An apology means I feel sorry, and I want to let you know that. Demanding an apology is like demanding that they feel a certain way. You can't demand that somebody be sorry, even if they should be. Right? I don't know who needs to hear this, but it's coming through, so I'm just going to say it. If, if you already know this as common sense, I'm not talking to you. Okay? I don't know who needs to hear this. But I'll tell you a philosophy that I've been living by for, for years now that saved me so much bullshit. If you don't genuinely feel sorry in your heart, don't apologize to me. Don't apologize to me. I don't care how bad you fucked me over. I don't care how bad you did me wrong. If you don't feel sorry for it, don't pretend that you do. Just don't say anything. Don't apologize to me unless you genuinely feel sorry for what you did. Bam. That tells you everything you need to know about anybody you need to know about who you're dealing with, whatever the fuck is going on. You will weed through so much childish nonsense and bullshit. All right? So, I know I told you all this. I know it was you. I know it was y'all a month or two ago. Let people do whatever the hell they want. And they'll show you what they want. 
That's the quickest, easiest way to find out what somebody's all about. Let them do what they want. Don't put a leash around their neck. Don't tell them what they can and can't do, where they can and can't go, who they can and can't talk to. Let them do what they want. Let them go where they want. Let them talk to whoever they want. Step back and watch. That'll tell you everything you need to know about whether or not that's somebody you need in your life. I don't know about you, but I don't think that the universe is stupid enough to pick me a life partner who doesn't have the common sense and the common human decency to respect a relationship without being told. I don't think so. Think about that. All righty, now we're going to take a look at the person from the past. Past person, past, past person. Hmm. Oh, let me get this deck. I got to replace it with one. Person Scorpio is inquiring about what is happening, what's happening. You know what that is, right? You're walking away from this, whether you want to or not. No, you don't want to, but you're doing it anyway, ain't you? I'm not seeing communication. Ah, I spoke too soon. <laughs> okay, so there might be communication, but very piss poor, awkward, weird communication. How about that? Advice for aspiring tarot readers out there. Sometimes... You don't want to speak until the whole spread comes out. Okay, all right. So possible communication. Um, again, awkward, weird, strange, funky, tense communication. We still got one hell of an intense connection going on here. So you live in this person's head and they live in your fucking head. It don't matter if you hop on a plane and fly 2,000 miles away to a new city and rebuild a whole new life, this person still lives in your head, don't they? They take up lots and lots of space in your head. And you take up space in their head, too. But the problem is, y'all don't know how to communicate to each other anymore. Y'all don't know how. So you're making a head-over-heart decision to walk away from this and just try to figure out how to heal from this, try to let go of this, the signs I have on the table are Pisces, Gemini, Capricorn, and Aquarius. Oh, I got Libra over here, too. Okay. Well, it doesn't say a whole lot, but I guess that says enough. So, let's look and see how this person feels about you. Let's see how this person feels about Scorpio. How does this person feel about Scorpio? They feel like it's a done dollar. They do not have any faith in the idea that you all can possibly rebuild this. And they're walking away too. This card look familiar? Y'all are mirroring each other. If you're wondering how this person feels, same way you feel. Same damn way. Giving you the silent treatment. 
This person wants to be the one in control of this situation. So, no, they have no plans of trying to reconcile with you. They're walking away from this and being done with it. But make no mistake about it. Yes, this person is very heartbroken. They don't want to walk away from this. But they're doing it to prove a point, basically. Walking away and being silent, that's the only jab they have left to throw. And they want that last jab. Problem is, I kind of feel like some of you are doing the exact same thing, you know? Okay. There's that star card again, especially if you're dealing with an Aquarius. Listen, listen, listen. Fixed signs. Stay away from other fixed signs. I've never personally, just personally, it's just me, I've never seen that work out successfully. That doesn't mean that it hasn't ever. I'm sure it has out there somewhere in the ether of recorded history. And that doesn't necessarily mean that it can't. It can, if you have two people on the same page at the same time working towards the same goal. But I've never witnessed it personally. It's challenging at best. Well, so how's this playing out? Is there communication happening here? What's going on? What's what's happening here? Let's see. Mm, I think there's probably going to be a communication attempt. Fucking A, dude. Eight of Cups. Communication attempt, but it's either being completely fucking ignored or that it's just a really, really awkward, strange, uncomfortable fucking conversation. One of the two. I can't figure out which. Could be a little bit of both. I think the bottom line here is that it's not a very happy, successful conversation. You're not getting closure. Okay, if you're looking for closure, it doesn't look like that's happening. If they're looking for closure, it doesn't look like it's happening. If anything, you'll probably walk away more frustrated than you were to begin with. And this connection is still insanely intense. So I don't see you really doing a whole lot of healing from this anytime soon. Not seeing you releasing this anytime soon. What is the advice? What's the advice for Scorpio? Not this deck. What is the best advice? What is the best advice? The Hermit. So right now, your number one priority is healing. I know y'all hate it when I say that. I know. But it's true. If it wasn't true, I wouldn't say it. How about this? Hang on, hang on. Let me get the spread laid out. Okay, how about this? How about this? I'm not going to say don't ever talk to this person ever again. Right now, it wouldn't be a very wise idea to try to talk to this person. If anything, it'll make things worse. Okay? But how about this, though? How about this? Let's make a little plan. Want to make a plan? Let's make a plan for the end of 2024. Okay? How about this? Let's plan to have a conversation with this person somewhere around November, December. Somewhere around Christmas time. Somewhere around the Christmas New Year's time. Huh? And let's dedicate no less than the entirety of 2024 to healing and evolving into a completely different person. Completely different. So that the next time they see you, the next time they talk to you, they have to get to know you all over again. How about that? You know, people don't like to see you evolve. 
Matter of fact, I just posted this on Facebook the other day. I always laugh when somebody tries to insult you by telling you that you've changed, you know? I take that as the biggest fucking compliment in the world. You've changed. Yes, and you have not. That's why we're not friends. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So let's do that. Let's do that. Because so many, so many amazing things can happen if you do this. I think, well, I don't know. It's a toss-up. One of my favorite things about doing this is the look on somebody's face. Especially somebody who thinks they know you like the back of their hand. You know? And, and hey, maybe at one point they did. Maybe they did know you like the back of their hand. But y'all spend some time apart, and they go off piddle-fucking around doing dumb shit, right? Partying, just trying to fuck people and play games and just basically run away from their problems. But you don't. You dig down and you get to work. You get on that fucking spiritual path. You start fucking healing. You start manifesting, right? And you start fucking killing it. Then y'all come back around in the future, and they look at you and they're like, I don't know what to say. <laughs> it's funny as fuck, dude. There's that. And the other really cool thing about it is if you do enough evolution, the next time you talk to this person, there will be a whole new light shining on them. A whole new light. And it's really hard to describe in words. It's, it's, it's almost one of those things that you can't explain. You just have to experience it where your consciousness elevates. You're a, just by talking to the person for five or 10 minutes, you're able to see things that are so clear that were right in front of your face the whole time in the past that you never even noticed. I see you for who you really are. Now it makes sense. And then that makes you rethink the whole fucking situation. Like, dude, I, now I see the situation for what it really was. Not just what I wanted it to be. It's crazy. Crazy. Very, very transformational. And then there's one thing that happens by default. You'll let go of this whether you want it to or not. Even if you thought in your mind, I'm going to make this work. Me and this person are going to get back together. They're going to see me. They're going to see how much I've changed. They're going to want to get with me. They're going to want to be with me. You talk to them for 10 minutes, you're going to be like, never mind. Fuck that. Fuck that. Why the fuck was I tripping on that? The fuck was wrong with me? Dude, thank you so much, universe, for not letting me get stuck in that trap. Now I see why you pulled the two of us apart. Sorry I doubted you. I will never doubt you again, universe, dude. I got you. Now Now I trust you, All right? It's fucking cool, dude. All right, well, I feel like those were the messages that my Scorpio friends needed to hear, so I'm gonna go ahead and end this video here. I am eternally grateful to every last one of you who still continue to tune in, play along, and show love, support, and positive feedback. Here going on six years, man. Every time I get on here and do this, that is what makes my job worthwhile here on YouTube, y'all. I greatly appreciate you. I love y'all, man, for real. Don't forget to check down there in the description of this video if you would like to find out how to schedule a personal reading. And I'm out of here now, y'all. Thanks again for tuning in. I'll see you sometime between now and the rest of all eternity.